Hi everyone, welcome back to our series of Azure Active Directory and in this video I am going to talk about managing groups. Now if you're watching this series from the beginning, in the last video I have covered how you can create custom sync rules in AAD Connect. The agenda for this particular video will be knowing types of groups in Azure Active Directory and how you can create them. Then I'm going to talk about all the settings that are related to group object and some of the PowerShell commands which you can use to check the difference in attributes of a different type of groups. And the last thing that I'm going to showcase will be self-service group management. Now let's move on in understanding groups in a nutshell. So groups in Azure Active Directory will have owners and members. And the basic difference between owners and members is that if you are an owner of a group, then you will be able to assign members. Now, by default, every user can create a group in Azure Active Directory, but there are settings from which you can actually block them, creating a specific type of group in Azure Active Directory. When I will showcase all this on portal.azure.com, then it will all make sense. But to begin with, if we compare a group object with a user object, group objects are also of two types, cloud groups and synced groups. So groups that are created directly from portal.azure.com will be cloud groups and synced groups will be obviously the one which are synced from on-prem to Azure Active Directory. Now, when you will sign into portal.azure.com, you will get two options in terms of cloud groups. The first one is security and the other one is Office 365. Now, though they will, there are many differences between these two different type of groups, but the first and the very basic one is that Office 365 groups are mail enabled. Now, what do I mean by this? For that, if I switch to portal.azure.com and if I click on Azure Active Directory and then click on groups, I will get the option of creating a new group. And the moment I will click on new group, now I'm getting the option of security and Office 365 as discussed here. Now, I said that the basic difference between security and Office 365 is Office 365 is by default mail enabled. Now, what do I mean by this? That if I've selected the option of security, I'm getting group name, group description, and membership type. But the moment I'll select Office 365, there is one more attribute that I have to populate so that this can get mapped to the mail attribute of this particular object. And that's why Office 365 groups are by default mail enabled from directory perspective. Though there are many features which Office 365 group has to offer, likewise shared mailbox. But understanding this from a directory perspective, one of the basic difference is that Office 365 groups are mail enabled now it doesn't matter which group type you select here there is one option which is very important and that is membership type now what does this actually mean that if you keep assigned then you have to manually assign members to a particular group but the moment you select this option of dynamic user you can actually add a query and what do i mean by this that let's say i'm saying for all the users if extension attribute 6 contains a value, let's say IT, then add them to this particular group, which we are about to create. Now, this is a very good feature because you can simply add one query and then all the members or all the users will be added in this particular group. This is something which is really important and it doesn't matter which type of group you choose here, you will get this option. In fact, for security, you, you will also get dynamic device. That means you can now add the queries for devices that are present in your Azure Active Directory. So this was all about knowing types of groups in Azure Active Directory. But if I sign in to the 
admin center of portal.office.com here you will get two more options the first one is distribution list and the other one is mail enabled security group now these are four different type of groups which you can create from portal.office.com and the difference will get listed here I'm also adding an article which is more over related to all these type of groups which you can read if you want but these are the basic difference uh, when it comes to creating groups either from portal.office.com or from portal.azure.com now let's move on in understanding the settings that are related to group object and the first one that we see here is general and here you see this option of self service group management now what does this actually means that owners can manage group membership request in access panel you can actually control this feature and where it says access panel it actually means myapps.microsoft.com the next option that you see here is restrict access to groups in access panel that is also something which you can enable and disable and then there are settings related to security groups and office 365 group now what does this actually mean that users can create groups in azure portal and i have set it to no and this is applied to security groups whereas i have selected this option for office 365 group now what does this actually mean that as a user if i try to sign in to myapps.microsoft.com i should not get the option to create security group whereas i should get the option to create office 365 group so now i'm going to sign in as a user to show you what will be the user experience if you make any changes from these settings so the so the expected behavior is that when i will sign in to myapps.microsoft.com as a user this is uh, a user which doesn't have any admin privilege and now if i try, try to create a group i should not get the option of security group i should only get the option of office 365 group so i'm signing to myapps.microsoft.com and i'm getting the option of groups the moment i will click on groups i will click on create group and as you can see i'm only getting the option of office 365 now if this setting would have been selected as yes i'll get two options here the first one will be security and the other one will be office 365 so this was all about self-service group management settings which are available on portal now there are two more thing or two more settings which you can refer to this one is expiration that means this setting will only be applied to office 365 groups that means you can define a time wherein a particular group will get expire and you can actually enter a email of a particular admin or group owner if you want to apply it to a selected groups you can select all these groups here or if you want to apply this setting to all office 365 groups you can simply select this option of all and then you can have a contact email now the reason why i said this will apply only to office 365 group because if i go back and select this option of add only office 365 group will get listed now this group which is named as aip and has email as label at the red concepts work.com if i try to search the group type what i will find is that this particular group is office 365 you can see group type getting mentioned as office so this expiration setting will only be applied to office 365 group now the third option that we see here is naming policy you can actually upload a list of keywords and if that keyword matches with any group name then that particular group will not be created or user will not be allowed to create that particular group and then you have something called group naming policy wherein you can add a prefix or suffix to a particular group but there is one more thing which i would like to add on here and that is that this 
policy will only be applied to a user object. Now, what do I mean by this? That as per this particular setting right now, what I'm saying is that add a string in every group name and that string is, let's say, concept. And I'm going to save this policy. Now, if I go back to Azure Active Directory and if I try to create a new group, I will not see any difference in terms of the options that I'm getting here. But if I sign in again as a user, what I will find is some differences and which I'm going to showcase you guys. So I'm just going to sign out and close this browser and I'm going to initiate a new session so that uh, the settings should get applied and I should see updated options and I go to portal.azure.com this time. Now see as I said before that by default every user has the access to portal.azure.com but you can block that as well and specifically you can control the settings which are related to groups which I have just shown you guys in the group setting panel. So now I've clicked on yes now I will be signed into portal.azure.com as a user of a particular directory and if I go to Azure Active Directory and now if I click on group and then I will click on new group and I'm going to select the security option or Office 365 will also work and as you can see that this value is getting populated for user which was not there for admin. Now the reason why I'm not getting the security option here because we have disabled that from the settings panel. So this setting is actually enabled which didn't allowed us to have to create a security group but as per our naming policy a string is getting added and which is named as concept and which is available here but that's not the same case with the admin now for the demo of this particular video i have already created two groups of different types and as you can see this is the group uh, which is office 365 and the uh, rest of the groups are security and why i said uh, that office 365 is a mail enabled because you get that option on portal but if you want to compare this from powershell what you can do, you can use either MS Online module or Azure AD module to access all these attributes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign in to Azure AD module and then I'm going to show you the basic differences between these two type of objects. So I'm going to type my GA credentials and then I'm going to sign in. We'll query all the groups and then I'll show you the basic differences. So I'm signed in now with uh, my GA account and I'm going to do get hyphen Azure AD group. And as you can see, all the groups are getting listed. So to query all the groups, you can use this particular command. And this is Office 365 group. So firstly, I'm going to query the attributes of this particular group which is get hyphen azure ed group hyphen object id and as you can see all the attributes are now getting listed and out of which i'm getting security enabled as true and mail is also populated now if i go back to portal and search for any group which has a security type and uh, let's say i'm going to select a group uh, named as license and as you can see that this group which I have created the membership of this particular group is actually a dynamic query that's happening and you can anyways change it anytime whenever you want and how you will come to know that because here it is showing you as dynamic and this is also a cloud group which is not synced from on-prem AD so now I'm going to query the license group and let's see what is the basic difference that we get in terms of attributes. So I'll again do get hyphen Azure AD group and then hyphen object ID and then I will again add format list. 
Now, the only difference that you will see here in Office 365 group as compared to your normal security group that mail enabled is set to false, whereas security enabled is set to true for all for both of these group types, not for all, but both of these group types. Now, there is one more thing which I can show you guys here right now, and that is that if you do get hyphen Azure AD group type, and if you just add one more command here, and that is get hyphen member, it will actually show you all the methods, properties that are available with this particular object type, and it will also show you the type. If you guys work with PowerShell very frequently, you for sure you know what, is, what does type means. It will also show you the type of a particular object type. So this is for sure a scope to uh, group, but you can actually do this for all the objects that you know that exist in Azure Active Directory. As you can see, I'm getting a lot of lists which has methods and properties for which you can do get, set, whatever you want. All this information can be checked from here. So this was all about knowing group types. But there is one more thing which I would like to cover here, and that is cloud groups will be available for application assignment as well as license assignment and they will have owners and members now what do i mean by this that if i go back to my portal and if i click on enterprise application and let's say i want to assign this salesforce application to a particular group what will happen all the office 365 group and security group will be available for assignment but distribution groups that are created from portal.office.com and the distribution group that you have synced from on-prem to azure active directory will not be available in this particular list because as per the design behavior of Azure Active Directory, security enabled attribute for a particular group should be set to true. That means this attribute has to be true to be available for application assignment. So as you can see, I'm getting most of the groups that are synced from on-prem, but I'm not getting the distribution group list getting listed here, and I will show you which group I'm referring to. So this is the group that I've created uh, from portal.office.com. It's actually a dis distribution list. But if I go for application assignment, this group will not get listed here. Whereas the Office 365 group will get listed here, here as well as all the security group will get listed here. This is one of the basic difference between the cloud groups and synced groups as well. So distribution groups synced from on-prem will not be available for application assignment and license assignment. So this was all about that you need to know about groups in Azure Active Directory. We have discussed type of groups. We have discussed how you can create them, blocking names, settings, expiration time, some of the settings which are related to groups as well as the PowerShell commands, some of the very basics one. But as we move on with the entire series, I will be telling you all the commands which you can use to add or remove members as well. In the next video, I'm going to talk about device management and then we'll cover the entire Azure AD registered devices, Azure AD joined devices, as well as hybrid Azure AD joined devices. If you guys have learned something new, please feel free to subscribe. If you have any suggestion, feedback or query, feel free to reach me at learnconceptswork at gmail.com. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.